Hello students, today in your geometry class we're going to talk about triangle congruency and how to prove triangles are congruent using SSS or side 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 and side angle side or SAS proofs. So at the end of this you should be able to prove right triangles are congruent using SSS and SAS. Now postulate 4.1 is the side 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 postulate and it states that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And they write it as triangle GHF is congruent to triangle PQR. Postulate 4.2 is the side angle side postulate. And that states if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Therefore, triangle BCA is congruent to triangle FDE. Now, it's extremely important that you notice this because this is going to help us in determining how to prove other triangles when we have not only side, 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 angle, side, but also angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. And just for the record, no, there is no angle, side, side. Now, Getting back to postulate 4.2, it's important to notice that in here it mentions side, angle, side, where the angle is mentioned in between two sides. That's important because if you look at the triangle, it says that that angle, this angle right here and this angle right here, are squeezed in between the two sides. So notice how here, are the two sides that they give us. The angle is in between them, which is why it's also listed as angle in between the two sides here. The last thing you need to know is that bisect is a fancy word for to cut in two equal sides or two equal halves or two equal angles. So bottom line is to cut in half. So let's look at an example here. Example 1 says that line segment WZ is congruent to line segment ZS, is congruent to line segment ZD, I'm sorry, SD, is congruent to line segment DW. They want us to prove that triangle WZD is congruent to triangle W, congruent to triangle SDZ. Now, we started working on proofs earlier in the year, and we're going to get back to them now. The trick is not to make it too complicated, but to use everything that we're given and to make notes. So the first thing we're going to do is write the statement. The statement is actually the given. So our statement is going to be, see if I can get this to work. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's just do it this way. We're going to take this stuff right there. And that's going to be our statement. We're saying all of these things are true. And the reason why we know that is because it's given. This should always be the easiest step because you don't have to know anything. You just have to take it all from the given. Now. Just to put a note on this, we are going to show that here we've proven that two sides are the same, and we've also proven another set of sides are the same here. So, so far, it could be side, 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 or side, angle, side. Now, we don't know that because they didn't tell us any set of angles are congruent. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to state that line segment ZD is congruent to line segment ZD. And the reason why we say that is because that is reflexive property. Now, that might seem a little odd to you, but all we're saying here is if we break this this triangle into two, and I'm going to color them in a different color so it's easier to distinguish. 
this triangle in black that I'm outlining is one triangle and this triangle in red that I'm also outlining. Now ZD on the black triangle is the same as ZD on the red triangle. So we're saying those two line segments are the same. And the reason why we can say that is because it's reflexive. So to make to elaborate a little bit more, when two triangles are touching each other on the same side, or how ZD is still touching each other, we can say that those two lines are congruent to each other, and we say they're reflexive because just like in a mirror, when we see a reflection, they're the same thing that we see in the mirror and uh, when we're looking at it ourselves. So when we look at a triangle, we can say the same thing. They're reflexive because they're touching and they're a reflection of one another. So we've actually just proven a third side. So we've proven three sides are there. And because we've stated that, we could say that triangle, let's just take a picture because it's easier to write down. Triangle WZD is congruent to triangle SDZ because of the SSS property. Let's try another problem. So, try, or IE, line segment IE is congruent to segment GH. EF, line segment EF is congruent to line segment HF. F is the midpoint of GI. So, if you didn't, if you don't know what goes in our first statement and reason, shame on you. But, our first statement is what's given. The reason is because Duh, it was given. So this would be a good time for us to take a look at what we've been given so far. It says IE is congruent to GH. That's a side. Okay, so that's a side. That's a side. And EF is congruent to HF. That's also a side. So, so far, it could be side, 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 or side, angle, side. Next thing we're going to look at is what to do now. Now, in our given, there it still mentions that F is a midpoint of GI, and we haven't used that yet, so we're going to look at that now. So it says point F, this point right here, is a midpoint of GI. Well, a midpoint means it's the middle point, okay, or it's the middle of that line segment. So at that point, we could easily say that line segment IF is congruent to line segment FG. And the reason why we could say that is because F is the midpoint, right? That means that those two sides are split in half. So our reason for that is definition of midpoint. And again, we're just using the stuff in the given. Because it says that F is the midpoint, and we could say that this statement for two is true, well, we know that because F is the midpoint, so we say definition of midpoint. Remember not to overcomplicate things by trying to make it sound fancier than it needs to be. Now, in keeping with, in keeping track of all of our letters, didn't we also just prove another side with IF and FG? So, we prove the third side. Then we say that the two triangles are congruent. Those two triangles are congruent. And the reason is because of SSS. So, let's try a third and final example. Given, or statement of reason, again, you should know this. Okay, so, 
here is the statement and the reason is because it's given again keeping track we know that FG and KL are side so we can say that's true because it's a side okay statement number two is it mentions that FG is parallel to KL so we'll get back to that in just a second but remember in two problems ago we mentioned that if two triangles are touching then we should use reflexive so let's break this these two triangles up so it's clear it says FGK F G and K the red is one triangle that we're trying to prove, and we're trying to prove it's congruent to this blue triangle, KLF. So K, L, and F. So notice how in our two triangles, they're, they're touching at FK. So we can say FK is congruent to FK. And the reason why we could state that is because of the reflexive property. So that's the reflexive property. So we've proven another side, right? So let's make sure we list that. Now, last but not least, we need to prove is it side angle side or side side side? Now the odd thing is that it mentions that FG and KL are parallel. Now if you think back to when we talked about parallel, parallel was mentioned and then it also mentioned congruent sides. With that said, then we should probably state that this angle and this angle are congruent because of alternate interior angles. So we could say that angle, angle G, F, K is congruent to angle F, K, L. And the reason, or it's really important that you notice how we mention these angles matter. The angle is actually at F, so that F needs to be in the middle of our angle of our angle statement. And here, angle FKL, F K L, K is in the middle, and we use the other two letters to make sure we show which one we're talking about. So we know that those two triangles are congruent because of alternate interior. angles. So we've proven an angle. So we could say that these two triangles are congruent now those two triangles are congruent now we have to determine by what property. Now so far we've only done side angle side or side 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 we have an angle and notice this angle is in between the two sides so we say side angle side now it's your turn I want you to work on this problem and post your answers to Edmodo hint one of your reasons should say definition of segment bisector because it bisects the segment. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.